Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be a great matchup between the New England Patriots and the Jacksonville Jaguars. With that, let's get on up to Jacksonville. Standing by for the call, it's our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Sunshine State in TIAA Bank Field here in Jacksonville. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Patriots to take over on offense. They're led out by a man who started more Super Bowls than anyone in NFL history, the great Tom Brady. I can't help but admire the career Tom Brady has had. The numbers are off the charts. The Super Bowl championships and rings, we know that they are incredible. But how about the durability? Had one season that he missed, most of that season because of a knee injury. The rest of the time, he answers the bell and wills his team to victory more times than not. And we keep hearing from people who are waiting to see the drop-off in his play. I'd quit worrying about it. I'd quit looking for it. He says he wants to play until he's 45. Is there any reason to doubt him? His skills have shown no sign of declining. They'll run it here. This is James Wayne. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Malik Jackson there to make the stop. Let's give you a look here at the New England offense. Let's take a look at the big fella, Rob Gronkowski. All pro, it feels like, each and every year. And when he's healthy, he's going to be all pro. He's done it four times in his career. 69 catches, over 1,000 yards in 2017. But why is he so good? Speed, size, agility, and absolutely understands the offense and where he needs to be in order to get the football. Brady to throw on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Wait, 20. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And able to find Dorsett. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down. Spectacular catch turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. down is Brady. That's Cordero Patterson hauling it in. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. 20, 20. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Three. 
So in Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. First carry now for Rex Burkhead. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, here's Brady. And a first hookup with his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. It's been a seven-play opening drive, and this is third and short. Brady going to give this one to Burkhead. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. You can see this quite a bit on running Still plays down. with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right because it's away from the play usually. So a lot of it goes undetected, but... I know this will surprise you. I took some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. Might want to take that course. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. We got, we're 20, we're 20. Shotgun now for Brady. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. So now on fourth down, on comes Steven Goskowski to try and get the patch three. This from 54 yards away. And I don't think this has the carry. Does not. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. That opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the game. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. Set. Green 80. Green set. On first down, Bortles. And an alley to run. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. went 3-4 they got some push from the inside and this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack he's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed how about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground hey, 
So a third and nine, and six defensive backs out there in the dime. Patrolling the passing lanes. Hey, 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 you got three Green 80. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end can be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 down at the 31. Here's Bortles to throw. And he is going to be hit and taken down. Bortles sacked. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Hey, hey, green 80. Green 80. Here's Leonard Fournette, thousand-yard rusher from a year ago. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he Jack, takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. On third and long, it's Bortles. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. The Jags with their first opportunity in the red zone. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Into the red zone. It's Bortles. He'll get this over to Westbrook. It's complete. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Green 80. From the gun, it's Bortles. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. TJ yelled in the one he was looking for. And it's third and short. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want. Get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Hey, 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 hey. Green 80. Green 80. Again, it's Bortles. This will be caught about the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Brandon, unless my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, yeah. that's the second time they've gone to him here in this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Green 80. Green 80. 
Again, they'll throw with Bortles. Try to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Another shot from the one on second and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Yeldon. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. And they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point of the game. And the question now, can the Patriot defense hold firm again on third and goal? They'll try to punch it in with four. And they'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Jags have taken the early lead. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. On first and ten, here's Brady. He's going to air it out deep for home. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's brought down after a good game. That goes for a gain of 31. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now Burkhead. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. 
He lost two there, and it's third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. And now they're looking up at a third down at 17 to go. 20, 20, yeah, get. From midfield, here's Brady. And this is going to be incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. The Jaguars getting set to go. And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice that it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 23. Throwing now is Bortles. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Deron Harmon. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. This is Burkhead. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Nothing is our score. More from Jacksonville after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. Wait, 20, wait, 20, 
from the gun. It's Brady. Goes underneath here to White. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Wait, 20! Now Brady leaves to Burke on the draw. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. 20. Now they'll run it on the toss. And not only will he not get the few inches he needs, he's going to go backwards. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Goskowski's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points. Not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. 380. 380. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And that'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Bortles going to throw. They'll find a rookie from LSU, DJ Shark, and they're able to get this one across the 35. First catch for it. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Bortles now. Five out of ten, 50% throwing it. Not so hot, but he does have a first down. To throw, it's Bortles. Incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Everyone's got four. Four down. Set. 
Bortles to throw once more. Caught, Safarian Jenkins, right side. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in his first half. It's a first down. One well, of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Dante Hightower on the stop. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Came out in a power set. That only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. The Jaguars on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is third and 11. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. Now Bortles. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. And the Jaguars send out their punter, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their own 16. On the run, it's Burkhead. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Brady to throw on second down. Over the middle, he gets it to Patterson. Brings it up just shy of the 25. Showed some of that quickness there on the move. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. New England on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This time they face a third and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, again, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in a run game. No gain. Here's Ryan Allen now. 
as he'll kick it away for the second time. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. And he's had his chances in this game. He just hasn't been able to find any daylight so far. Patience, patience, patience. And that's the hard part for a runner because they expect every run to be a big one for something to pop. So they have to sometimes go through the struggles before it happens for them later in the game. But he got to give credit to the rest of the team. They've worked around the fact that he hasn't had his normal big game. Yeah, despite his struggle, still winning here in the second quarter. They go play action here on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Fournette on the counter. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half and some of these shorter games turn into bigger runs later. To throw his balls. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds at the 39. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Bortles now just 7 of 15 so far, but he's got a first and 10. Bortles. Safarian Jenkins has it. And he finally goes down, but not before reaching the 21. A big third down play there for the Jags. And even 40 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 all the way down at the 21 yard line. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. Now Bortles. He's going to let it go deep. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off. The good old cover three defense partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown, and pick it off, just as we saw there. The Patriots offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're gonna lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Brady and the Patriots now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Hey, 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 hey. Wait, 20! Yeah. And on the ground they go with a running back. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally, 
and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And they'll run it here. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fix and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. New England on third down. Just one for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big-time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told him, if you don't take care of this football, you have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. And they'll go on the ground. And he's got some space here. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That'll be a New England first down and gain of 12. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. Wait, 20! Brady now on first down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And now off to the races. Down the right side. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. James White, 55 yards. And the Pats able to cash in for six. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. Extra point good by Goskowski. And the lead is now 10 to 7. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Goskowski now out to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes Blake Bortles now to lead his offense back out there. He's likely still kicking himself from the interception last drive that wound up leading to a go-ahead score. And he's going to assume all that came with that one, all right? That's all on him but he also knows he's got to erase it from his mind and get back out there. This drive, very important. Yeah. 
Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back with more from Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Four down, four down. 380. Shotgun now for Bortles. Throw left side complete. It's Cole. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks, and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that will drive a team towards a victory. Offside defense. And yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take Still a first whole down. lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Now they'll try to take advantage of that offsides call. Here's first and five. Throwing his borders. And the tight end here, Safarian Jenkins. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So you got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. He's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Bortles now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. Bortles gives to Yeldon on the draw. He will push his way down to about the 14. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half.
Now Bortles throwing on second down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, it's Bortles. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. is Josh Lambeau now for the Jaguar field goal. And Lambeau will put this one through, and that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. On the return, here's a dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now out come the Patriots. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. And he's brought down after a good game. That one goes for 24 yards. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action.
First and ten, here's Brady. Goes underneath here to White. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It's a gain of five on the play, and it's a second down. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. To return it is Corey Grant. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And making their way back out there now, the Patriots defense. And they have been disruptive in the backfield. And how often when we see this, as we look at some of these highlights, is it just better players getting in there versus scheme that is defeating the offense? It's a great question. And I think oftentimes we rely on scheme. We fall back and say, well, the scheme broke down rather than giving credit to the players making plays. But when the scheme does break down, you're looking at oftentimes just being overloaded. Too many guys coming from one side or one particular area, then you can actually block them. You know, if there's two guys here to block them, they'll bring three, and that third guy will get through. So when you want to max protect there, meaning getting everyone in, your whole offensive line, your tight end, and your running backs, trying to make sure that you're never outnumbered by the defensive guys coming in. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. A gain of three, second down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Yeldon. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right to the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. The Jaguars on third down. They've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This is third and 11. Everyone's got four. Four down. Check. Green 80. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. Open man right side is Shark. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Here comes the Patriots offensive unit. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. 
and they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. Again, they run with Burkhead. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. There for the tackle, the former Wisconsin Badger, Leon Jacobs. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Back near his goal line. Here's Blady. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Holding offense. So a holding penalty, and that'll send him backwards. You know they're trying not to do that. I mean, we know that, right? We talk to them all the time. But sometimes the defensive guys just put you in awkward situations and you get caught grabbing their jerseys. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. Pulled in at the 24. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. So a good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Try to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Set, green 80. Set. On second down, here's Bortles. And this is going to be incomplete. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. All right, let's just go walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis.
So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Set. Green 80. Green set. Now Bortles. Over the middle, hold in by Sharp. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On second down, here's Fournette. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. The Jaguars on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. Here it's third and three. Set. Green 80. Set. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. The five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there. And he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. fake here on first down flushed out right and he'll be brought down at the 21 just shy of the 20 in the red zone nice work to get seven out of that and it's second down and we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play but you know there's some really upset defenders on that one they thought that they had him instead he was coated in teflon and got away Bortles on the give to Fournette. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. The Jaguars on third down. They've been really good converting seven of their ten tries. They're up against a third and one situation. Now Bortles on the bootleg. And he'll get that to Fournette complete. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Bortles now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. We got green 80. Green 80. Now T.J. Yeldon. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. Holding offense. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. 
sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. That's going to set him back five yards. here on first down. He'll get this over to Westbrook. It's complete. One yard is the gain there. It'll bring up second down. to throw on second down. A throw left side complete to his receiver Westbrook. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions looking for a ninth. This is third and 17. Green 80, green 80. Again, it's Bortles. Over the middle, complete. It's Cole. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there and they were able to successfully complete that one. And Lambo will put this one through and that's going to up the lead to 15 to 10. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So the Patriots coming out now. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. And they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a... Base is clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. By 20! A play fake for Burkhead. Now Brady. He's going to air it out for Dorsett. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I remember Philip Dorsett coming out of the University of Miami, ready to hit the league. All we talked about was speed, 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 just to throw it to him. And you've got a great chance at a completion, but not that time. Not that time. They tried to deep downfield with his speed, but incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, Brady. And he'll be wrapped up around the waist and pushed down. Malik Jackson breaking through to get him for a loss of seven. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you're doing a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. Mm -hmm. 
tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. Shotgun now for Brady. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Hogan. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. I'm guessing, partner, that if we're in the huddle with the Patriots right now, there's not a single guy that thinks they have any chance of coming back in this one, especially not with Tom Brady. There. Yeah, who's Tom Brady? What's he done in the past as far as comebacks are concerned? They're down right now, but that can evaporate quickly with him in the huddle. Fielded just inside the 30. And a seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns green 80 green 80 they'll start out on the ground it's tj yeldon and he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. i call that play a success a nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down a very solid gain on that play time but end up putting a little too much heat on it don't you think partner absolutely just needed a touch more air under it instead he fired an absolute bullet Here we go. so after the second down in completion they'll come up now against a third and six shotgun now for Bortles the open man is shark it's complete and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. Incomplete, over the middle, Safarian Jenkins. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. First down carry now for Yeldon, and he'll be taken down at the 34. The safety Patrick Chung is the one who makes the stop. 
run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. To throw, it's Bortles. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Trying a little razzle-dazzle on third and short. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And that'll be off the crossbar and out. It's short. He couldn't get it there. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So points so crucial in a tight game like this, but this kick off the goalpost, and that'll keep the score right where it is. Yeah, it wouldn't have made this a two-score game, but any cushion this late definitely would have helped. Now they need to ask their defense for another stop, and that's going to require some work. Now the Patriots' offense, they worked their way back out onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Brady and the Patriots now first and 10 at the 34. Throwing on first down is Brady. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. throw again. Brady. And oh, he's going to be hit and driven into the turf. Duran Smoot coming hard that time. He's able to run him down for a loss of 12. Well, there was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. By 20, by 20. Hey, hey. From the gun, it's Brady. Gronkowski's got it on the crossing route. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. 23 yards on the play. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Brady now, 13 out of 17 throwing the ball. He's got a first down. By 20, by 20, by 10. On play action, now Brady. Over the middle, Dorsett. 
And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That goes for a gain of 31. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 24. White 20! White 20! White 20! Now a play fake, Brady. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Cordero Patterson, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Patriots have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They're going to try and run. And he will not get there. He comes up short. And they're unable to push this lead to a field goal as it'll remain a one-point game. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, when we to love go that for chart. one. I do <laughs> love it. It helps you with your decision-making during heated times. And just look at it right here in this part, point of the game. Go for two. Try and make it a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. Koski now out to kick it away. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And I hate to point to that missed field goal from their last drive, but you look at the scoreboard, they would be in the lead if they had that three. But no doubt those points or those missed points do loom large, but here they're getting a chance for a makeup, aren't they? Almost like my time in school, I was always begging my teachers for a makeup exam. Here's their opportunity now to put those points on the board. And every point becoming more vital here in the second half. Portis leads the Jags up first and 10 at their 25 yard line. From the gun, it's Portis. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that'll make it a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Here's Bortles to throw. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. And it's picked up by the Patriots. And fantastic field position has them just outside the 10 at the 11-yard line in the red zone. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Now the Patriots gearing up to go now. Here we go. 
And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Brady to throw on second down. That's complete. Right around the eight. Flash those fast feet, but they'll drop him at the five-yard line as he can't get any closer to the end zone. New England on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and five. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And incomplete. The contact made the ball run free and brings up fourth down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden they're down. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only give up the field goal, and they were able to chop back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in this game, because it didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. that when your tight end gets it, it's quite another. We keep seeing the evolution of that position, don't we? Well, we've seen where it's gone from strictly as a blocker to a guy who caught a few passes to now an integral part of the passing game, sometimes the primary receiver, because a lot of these guys have wide receiver skills, and we're seeing that on display here. Just think about the guys of the past looking back at this game and saying, sure wish that was me. I'd love to have gone out for those types of passes. On first and ten, here's Bortles. And his throw here is incomplete. 
Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Bortles to throw once more. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off near the 34. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'll move you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about a three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> now Brady throwing on second down. Blitz coming and down he goes. Telvin Smith coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. Wait, 20! Operating from the gun, Brady. And pressure gets to him again. Yannick Ngakwe, he's the one to get him this time. And back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. I remember when I was a kid, and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Here's Ryan Allen now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this will be taken at the 13. A big boot that time. 57 yards, the official distance. And that will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. I think we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at the 20. Four down, four down. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Play action. Now it's Bortles. And his throw is going to be incomplete. 
It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Deron Harmon. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. Agreed, that's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Here's Brady. This is White on the screen. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. Now, they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. <laughs> All right, guys, you had your fun? All right, throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. A very good starting field position for the Jaguars offense as they come up first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. 
Bortles going to throw. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Cole. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Back to throw. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Portals to the former Jets, Safarian Jenkins for the Jags first down. Back to throw. This is Yeldon on the dump off. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll bring up a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. He's back to throw. Open that right side is sharp. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville in a first down. Well, look to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. He'll look to throw. Over the middle, hauled in by Sharp. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Patriots have it. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they've got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. And they'll run it here. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. And now the Jags going to signal for another timeout. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. New England on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and eight. Wait, 20. And they'll go with a ground attack here. So we got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter.
So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Ryan Allen now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And he feels it cleanly. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here comes Blake Bortles now to lead his offense back out there. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? It's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Bortles to throw. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. And he'll spike it here with 13 seconds showing on the clock. And this one incomplete. And all that remains is 13 seconds. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. For Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville. <laughs>